This is part two of lecture 5b of applied machine learning. In this lecture, I would like to um, continue our discussion of the probabilistic approach to machine learning. And in this part of the lecture, I want to focus on the other kind of learning that we saw, which was uh, the Bayesian approach to learning. And I would like to give you an example of a, of a machine learning algorithm that we've seen before that can be derived from a Bayesian perspective. So recall that the Bayesian approach to machine learning consists in treating the set of parameters theta as a random variable whose value happens to be unknown. This is in, con in contrast to the frequentist approach where we have some true theta that we want to estimate. So for example, if we're throwing coins, the, the, the coin has the true probability of landing heads or tails, and we want to estimate this. And in the Bayesian approach, there is a probability uh, we, we define and we work with a probability that the bias of the coin takes a certain value, that it's biased towards heads or tails by a certain amount. And recall that in order to define uh, a model that can be used within the Bayesian approach, we have to define two components, a likelihood model that has this form, which defines a probability over x and theta given, over x and y given theta. This is the same kind of model that we worked with earlier. And then there's also a prior, which specifies our existing belief, our pre-existing, our initial belief about the distribution before we see any data. And by multiplying these, we now form the so-called joint distribution over all the variables. And, um, and now we can, um, and now we have actually a probability over theta. Now, we also saw that the Bayesian approach is often in practice intractable. In order to apply the Bayesian approach, we have to take this, this joint probability and we have to transform it into another probability, which is called the posterior, which is the probability of theta given to data. And doing these operations in practice is really expensive computationally, and it's, it's an intractable, it's a computationally intractable problem. So in order to perform Bayesian uh, Bayesian learning, there are various approximation algorithms. And we also saw in the previous lecture uh, an approach which is called maximum a posteriori or MAP learning. And this is an approximation to the fully Bayesian approach. In maximum a posteriori learning, we are maximizing the following objective, which is our joint. But instead of looking at the full distribution of theta given the data, we're only trying to find the most likely value of theta under the joint model um, here, instead of looking at the full distribution. So I'm going to now focus on the MAP approach, and I'm going to show how we can derive some of the existing, some of the earlier algorithms, some of the algorithms that we have seen earlier in this course as a special case of the MAP learning approach. And the algorithm that I want to derive as a special case of the MAP approach is going to be ridge regression. Recall that uh, in ridge regression, we are fitting a linear model of this form, um, where we have inputs x, and our estimate of the target theta is this linear model, uh, theta dot product with x. And the ridge model fits a, an L2 regularized mean squared error, which has this form. Here on this side, we have our mean squared error. And on, the, on this side here, we have our regularizer, which is simply the L2 norm of the parameter vector theta. So by, by penalizing its L2 norm, we are, uh, we're forcing this parameter theta to be small. Now, let's look at how we can interpret ridge regression as a special case of MAP estimation. Again, the same way as we did in the previous video, we're going to define a probabilistic model from, uh, from the perspective of, um, uh, with, with the framework that we had earlier, using the probabilistic approach, we will define a probabilistic model, we will define a model class, and we're going to apply the principle of maximum likelihood to obtain an objective. And then we will see that this turns out to be a special case of ridge regression as well. Again, uh, in terms of the model itself, we will use the same conditional Gaussian, uh, we will fit the conditional distribution of y given x 
uh, and theta using the same Gaussian approach that we saw earlier. Again, here, this is a Gaussian distribution whose mean is parameterized by a linear function of x. And then in order to apply uh, the MEP approach, we also need to define uh, a prior over theta. And we're going to assume that this is a Gaussian prior with mean zero and a different variance tau. So this, this had a variance of sigma, this uh, or, um, variance of sigma squared. Now the variance here will be tau squared and, uh, and it has mean zero and it's a distribution over the parameters theta. So just applying the definition of a Gaussian distribution, we have the following expression for our prior. And now we can apply the maximum likelihood approach. Um, oh, so, uh, sorry, we can apply the uh, the maximum a posteriori approach to maximize the following objective function. This is the log probability of our joint distribution. This is the log of our joint probability distribution. And now writing our set of um, our set of example our, our our definition, we have the following uh, form where I have simply plugged in the definitions that I used earlier. And now I just simplify the, these terms by, um, by taking out these constants uh, or these, these multiplicative constants because they're, they're, uh, because I'm taking the log, I can, uh, I can put them into this additive constant term, and now the exponential cancels out with the log, and I have the following expression. So this is the same form that I had earlier, except that now uh, I have this following extra, I have this additional extra term theta that's, um, that's going to be our, um, that's, that's going to be this, uh, that's going to be added to this particular, uh, to, to our mean squared error objective. And now you can see that this just happens to be our previous mean squared error approach where I have added um, a Gaussian prior with, uh, where, I have, where, where we have added a Gaussian prior uh, and this Gaussian prior just corresponds to squaring the value of the parameter theta. So here I've, uh, here theta is squared, but if we have more than one parameter, then this is just going to be the sum of the squared parameters. If theta is multidimensional, then we have uh, just a product of different distributions over of Gaussian distributions over theta, and now we will uh, and it will just become the sum of the thetas here. So what we see here is ridge regression is also a special case of performing map estimation with a Gaussian prior, in the same way that least squares was a special case of maximum likelihood uh, under a similar model. Here, let me again state this a little bit more precisely. Uh, here I'm again defining ridge, uh, I'm defining the ridge algorithm, which, uh, which we saw earlier. And this is the same definition that we, that we saw in our earlier video. And now, and now I have just added this probabilistic interpretation in that we're by uh, fitting a, a ridge least squares model is equivalent to fitting a conditional likelihood, uh, conditional Gaussian, sorry, a conditional Gaussian probability distribution using MAP. And in the same way that taking the probabilistic approach and using the principle of maximum likelihood gives us a wide range, it's a, it's a general way of deriving many machine learning algorithms, and it's also a way of motivating and explaining why we're making certain choices for the algorithms that we saw earlier for, for standard machine learning algorithms. It helps explain and motivate them. In the same way that this was true for maximum likelihood learning, the same thing can be said for MAP learning or the Bayesian approach to machine learning, uh, of which I did not give an example, but the same kind of examples hold as well. And uh, essentially, we can, we can both derive, we can both explain classical machine learning algorithms using the Bayesian or MAP approach, and we can also derive new algorithms. So more generally, uh, anytime we apply some sort of prior to the parameters of the model, it's very easy to interpret this as a form of regularization. 
um, the intuition here is that we have a, we have prior knowledge we have prior understanding that the weights of the model should be small the weights of a good model are small and so we encode this uh, as a prior and we just happen to assume that this is a, a Gaussian prior centered at zero um, and by making this assumption that we have a prior we naturally derive regularization from a probabilistic perspective so you can think of this as another way of explaining and understanding regularization for example if we were to be using l1 regularization then we could interpret this as using a laplace prior on the data which is another probability distribution so if instead of assuming a gaussian prior on the weights we assume a laplace prior we get back l1 regularization and many other algorithms will have similar interpretations and so um and so again i would like to um i would like to highlight in this lecture that the probabilistic and bayesian approaches are really powerful ways of thinking about machine learning models explaining what machine learning models do and also deriving new models and new algorithms